It's amazing how much someone grows over time. I don't just mean physically or mentally, but spiritually as well. I have known about God ever since I was a little girl and have always kept him with me. However, just like most people today, I didn't do much to let others know about him. It wasn't that I was afraid, but more like I thought others were spreading his word, so I didn't have to. I was lazy. I grew up always hearing that we needed to do God's works, but it sounded like work. I wasn't deliberately avoiding the topic, I just didn't go out of my way to tell others about him. Again, I figured there were enough people out there doing it for me. However, I was wrong. I am sure most of you have heard it said that faith without works is dead. In my mind, that translated to mean that unless I get involved in some way, I am lost. To me, that meant that I had to go out of my way to join the youth group or even more to contribute. Unlike those around me, I didn't feel the need or the want to do something about my faith. So I didn't. For a long time, I stayed in a sort of limbo. As I grew, spiritually, I realized the flaw in my thinking. The reason I didn't want to make an effort to do anything was that I was far from God. I may have grown up in a Christian home and I knew of God, but I didn't know him. It's like how most of us know of Robin Williams, but we don't know him. There's a big difference between knowing of someone and actually knowing them. For example, when you meet someone new, you know their name and maybe a few details about them, but nothing deeper than that. As time goes by, you develop a friendship and start getting to know what that person is really like. That is when you come to understand why they do things and how they do things. It's the same with God. Unless we fervently seek Him by reading His Word and praying, we will miss so many blessings in our lives. When we actually get to know who God is and all the things He has done for us, it's like a fire is lit inside of us. We feel this burning need to share all the things He does for us. We want to show others the great love and compassion God gives. That is the way it's meant to be. The love we have for him makes us want to do his works. Romans 1 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. You see, faith and works go hand in hand. You need faith, which makes you want to do his works, and by doing his works, you're growing in your faith. It took me a long time to understand that. A lot of people tend to think that by having one or the other, you are doing what God wants. That is why you see a lot of people doing charitable things, but they don't have faith. Or we see people with great faith, but they keep quiet and show no one the faith they have in him. You need to have both. In the New Testament, we see when Jesus sends out his disciples and tells them to preach the gospel to all. He wasn't just talking to them, he was talking to us as well. God is giving us the opportunity to take part in his plan to save a life. We are to be like John the Baptist and make a way for Jesus. In John 1, 6-9, it says, There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. In another passage, John 3, 22 through 36 to be exact, we see that John knew his role in God's plan. You see, John was a very spiritual man and had many loyal followers. At one time, Jesus was a little ways away baptizing people in John's territory. John's followers became angry and told John about this treachery. Here is where we see how wise John really was. To this, John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard. 
but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limits. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. The reason I share this story is to remind you who is the one who saves. A lot of times we get so excited talking to someone that we think it's our job to save them. We can't save them. We are John. We are to make the way and to bear witness of the light, the Messiah, the one true savior. By giving our testimony and by sharing what he has done for us, we are showing them the way to a new life. Jesus is the way. John 14, six states, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When we live our lives in Jesus, we get to take part in God's plan. We are given the privilege to make a difference in someone's life. The first step is to get to know him. Don't just know of him, but know him on a deeper level. You need to surrender your life to Jesus and know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Once you do that, you will see great works done in your life because he now resides in you. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I will live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to check out my blog, which you will find a link to it in the description below. I hope you all have a blessed day. Before I go, I will leave you with this. In Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.